In the heart of the Middle East lies a land sacred to billions. It's the setting of the Bible, the home of prophets, and the battleground of empires. But beyond faith and politics, modern genetics has begun to uncover the deeper story. The shared biological roots of the peoples who live there today, Jews and Palestinians alike. This is the story of ancient Canaan, Biblical Israel, exile, return, and the DNA that endures through it all. According to the Bible, around 2000 BC, Abraham, father of the Israelites, left Mesopotamia and settled in the land of Canaan. But genetic evidence reveals that the Canaanites the people already living in the land had deep roots. They descended from local Stone Age farmers, mixed with migrants from the Caucasus and northern Mesopotamia. By this time, male DNA lineages had shifted from older types like haplogroup E to haplogroups J1 and J2, which are still common in Jews, Palestinians and other Levantine peoples today. Modern genome studies show that over 90% of Levantine ancestry can be traced back to these ancient Canaanites. After the Exodus, the Bible tells of the Israelites entering the Promised Land, conquering Canaan, and forming the tribes of Israel. But genetic data suggests there was no large-scale replacement of people. The Israelites were likely Canaanites, who evolved a distinct identity, possibly through religion, language, and shared experience. Meanwhile, archaeology and genetics confirm the arrival of the Philistines, identified in the Bible as enemies of Israel. DNA from Philistine graves shows southern European ancestry, possibly from the Aegean, their influence added only 5 to 10% European genes to coastal areas, introducing markers like R1B, but didn't displace the local population. The Bible recounts the exile of the ten tribes by the Assyrians, and later the deportation of Judeans to Babylon. Genetics backs this up, but shows the impact was minor in DNA terms. While some Mesopotamian genes may have entered through settlers or intermarriage, the core Levantine identity, haplogroups J and E, remained. When exiled Judeans returned under Persian rule, they may have brought back wives or children with Babylonian ancestry, but the genetic continuity remained strong. The Bible ends its historical books in the Persian era, but history rolled on. Alexander the Great introduced Greek culture. Romans took over in 63 BC. The New Testament opens in a land under Roman occupation. Genetically, Roman soldiers, Greek colonists and administrators from across the empire left small genetic footprints. European haplogroups like R1A, R1B, or I appear in trace amounts. But the majority of the population, Jewish, Samaritan, Pagan, or early Christian, still carried Levantine ancestry. Then came catastrophe. In 70 AD and 135 AD, Rome crushed Jewish revolts. The temple was destroyed. Jews were killed enslaved or scattered. This marks the beginning of the Jewish diaspora, a key moment in biblical prophecy and in genetic history. As Jews settled across Europe, North Africa and Asia, they took their Levantine DNA with them. Studies show that Jewish populations remain genetically closer to Middle Eastern peoples than to the local populations around them. 
Sephardic and Mizrahi Jews share DNA with Palestinians and other Levantines. Ashkenazi Jews, especially in Eastern Europe, picked up European ancestry, about 20 to 30 percent overall, including R1A, possibly from converts or intermarriage. One striking detail, about 50 percent of Ashkenazi Levites carry R1A, possibly linked to a founding male in Eastern Europe. Despite these additions, most Jews still carry J1, J2 and E markers of their ancient homeland. In the 7th century, Islam spread across the Middle East. Arab armies conquered the Levant. Many locals converted to Islam. Arab settlers, mostly men, added more J1P58, a lineage already present in the region, but more common in Arabia. Today, Palestinian Muslims have 35 to 40 percent J1, while Palestinian Christians have more J2 and E markers tied to earlier populations. Still, modern Palestinians of both religions are overwhelmingly descended from pre-Islamic peoples. Crusaders and Ottomans left their mark, but only faintly. The Bible is silent here, but history marched on. Crusaders came from Europe and briefly ruled the Holy Land. Their DNA, R1B, I1, I2, entered the local gene pool but faded over time. Ottoman era settlers, Circassians, Bosnians and Egyptians brought in new genes in small amounts. Yet the dominant DNA of the land remained local, showing remarkable resilience. With the rise of the Zionist movement in the early 20th century, millions of Jews returned to Palestine after centuries in exile. They came from all corners of the diaspora, Eastern Europe, North Africa, Central Asia and the Indian subcontinent. Each community shaped by the lands they had settled in, but still carrying echoes of a shared origin. Their DNA reflects this long journey. R1A is especially common among Ashkenazi Jews, pointing to a strong presence in Eastern Europe. R1B, tied to Western Europe, is often found among Jews with Iberian or French roots. Q, less common, may trace back to Jewish communities along Central Asian trade routes. G, widespread in the Caucasus and parts of the Near East, shows continuity with ancient Levantine populations. L and H, typically found in South Asian populations, appear among Jewish groups with deep roots in Persia and India. Yet despite this diversity, one powerful thread remains. The ancient haplogroups J1, J2 and E continue to run through Jewish populations across the world, linking many of them to their ancestors in the hills of Canaan and the kingdoms of Judah. Palestinians, both Muslim and Christian, have lived continuously in the land for centuries often inhabiting the same towns and villages since antiquity. Genetic studies show that they retain a strong Canaanite and Israelite genetic core, especially in their paternal lineages, such as haplogroups J1, J2 and E, which are deeply rooted in the ancient Levant. Over time, additional influences entered the gene pool Arabian ancestry became more prominent through the paternal line following the 7th century Muslim conquests. Meanwhile, African ancestry, often reflected in maternal lineages, suggests ancient ties to Red Sea and Trans-Saharan trade routes. 
Yet even with these later layers, the foundation remains local. Their DNA speaks of deep-rooted continuity, tracing back to the same ancestral populations that once lived in Canaan, Judea and Samaria thousands of years ago. Genetic research reveals a layered but clear picture. Ashkenazi Jews carry about 55 to 65 percent Levantine ancestry, with 20 to 30 percent European additions, including paternal haptogroups R1a and R1b, and maternal lineages like K. Sephardi Jews retain 65 to 75 percent Levantine roots, blended with some Iberian and Maghrebi ancestry. Mizrahi Jews, largely from the Middle East and Iran, show the highest Levantine continuity, 70 to 80 percent, with minor North African or Iranian input. Meanwhile, Ethiopian Jews share less than 20 percent Levantine DNA, being primarily East African in origin. Bukharan and Indian Jews carry 50 to 70 percent West or South Asian ancestry, with traces of Middle Eastern genetic links. Among Palestinian males, the dominant haplogroups further highlight local continuity. J1, especially subtype J1P58, appears in 35 to 40 percent, reflecting both ancient presence and later Arabian influence. J2, found in 15 to 25 percent, links to ancient Levantines, Phoenicians and even Greek colonists. E1B1B, seen in 20 to 25 percent, traces back to Neolithic Levantine farmers, the likely descendants of the Canaanites. The story of Israel and Palestine isn't just one of conflict and exile. It's also a story of connection, of deep ancestry that transcends politics. Today, whether someone identifies as Jewish or Palestinian, the DNA often tells the same truth. You both descend from the same ancient people of the land. The Bible told a story of one family, Abraham's. Modern genetics shows that even today, that family may be larger than we ever imagined. If that moved you, don't forget to like, comment and subscribe to the History Hub. Here we explore the genetic roots of nations, from forgotten empires to modern identities. Dive deeper with our videos on the history of Jerusalem and the powerful story behind the founding of modern Israel. Because history isn't just remembered, it's inherited.